And we're going out this morning on the video chat to join six time CFL All Star, former BC Lion, Winnipeg Blue Bomber, and Saskatchewan Rough Rider Baron Simpson, the Minister of Defense, joining us this morning from where? Baron, where are we where are we checking in with you from today? Fort Worth, Texas. Oh. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas right now. Uh, Love Fort great. Worth, Texas. Yeah, Baron, uh, how, how, how are things in Fort Worth this morning? Hot? Oh, uh, very hot. It's probably uh, 101 degrees right now. It's going to be hot for the rest of uh, this week, over 100 degrees. But I do like the heat a little more than the cold. No offense, Canada. Uh, you know I love you guys. But I, I like the heat a little bit better. Uh, I'm with you, and I'm, I'm with you in spirit today. And speaking of spirit, Baron, you've always had a lot, um, both on the field and off. Tell us, before we get into the football stories, what's up with you these days? What's up now in the life of Baron Simpson? Well, right now, I'm actually coaching at Chism Chism Trail High School. As you can see, my gear on uh, representing our school. Uh, we're, we're just starting two a days with our freshmen, and, man, I'm having a blast. You know, I... The, uh, the the heckle and jackal that our coaches got when I was playing, I was thinking to myself, man, I've never coached a game, but uh, I love it. You love, the, you know, when you love the game, uh, every opportunity that you can feed into kids and um, help them reach their goals, their dreams, and the things they want to accomplish in life, you do that. So, man, it's, it's I'm having a blast right now at Chisholm Trail High School and, uh, you know, teaching our kids how to play the game, the uh, fundamentals of the game, and Really, uh, it's a very our school is a very young school. Uh, opened up in 2012, so it's a very young school, and we're trying to set a culture here uh, with uh, my head coach, uh, uh, Coach Bodie. Um, so I'm I'm excited about the opportunities we have here, and and I'm having fun. So I'm having a blast. It is fun, and Baron, I got to tell you that I split my time. I'm a recovery coach now in sports, entertainment, and military, and when I became a coach, I went around and apologized to every coach I've ever dealt with because I didn't understand it <laughs> till now. So how has this changed your life, and is there any coach you'd like to apologize to today on the air? Actually, you know, I was – man, I, I kind of understood it a little bit more as a player. I usually try to be an extension of my defensive coordinator and head coach as much as as much as possible um, when I play the game as a pro and as a college player. Um, but I see the pains that they went through. I'm a defensive coordinator here. And, uh, man, there's some challenges. You, you know, you love the good times, but you have the challenges too. I see why our coaches used to yell and fuss and cuss all the time because it's a challenge. Now, I don't do any – you know, I don't do any fussing and cussing. But, uh, man, I, I, I love being out there with those guys, those kids, and – uh, helping them become the very best version of them that they can possibly be. But, you know, for all of my coaches and, you know, some of my uh, knucklehead teammates you had to deal with, of course, <laughs> of course, with myself, too. I could be, you know, a pain in the butt sometimes. I apologize to you guys. I understand your pain now. But I do know that just like I love it, my coaches loved it, at, uh, loved it as well. Fair enough. Covered a lot of high school football in Regina. The average attendance is probably 200. It's 15,000 until I get there, and then it becomes 200 in a hurry. Big <laughs> evacuation. But I don't think people in Canada really grasp how big high school football is in the States and in Texas in particular. What kind of scale of football are we talking about down there as far as scrutiny, interest, crowds, etc.? Man, here in Texas, I've never seen it, seen it done any uh, better, man. Like, everything football is bigger in Texas than any state I've ever been a part of um, man just a example of that we went down to coaching school we have a coaching school uh, event uh, seminar event we have every year and we had over man I think it was over like 20,000 20 or 30,000 coaches that attended attended that event my um, Texas high school coaches association event and it was huge man the football in Texas is huge you see high school uh, facilities look like professional facilities. It's big time. So I definitely enjoy coaching football in Texas. It's, it's huge, man. Not, like nothing you've ever seen before, uh, especially especially on the high school level. It's big time. you got great coaches out here, uh, very detailed coaches in the state of Texas, and um, just like everywhere else. But, uh, man, in Texas, it's different. I, I've been around football for a very long time. Uh, but in Texas, it's a little different. High school football is about on the college level uh, when you when you get to the um, nuts and bolts of it.
it's amazing how many former riders, and I'm going to call you a former rider, even though this the fewest amount of your years was spent here. But you well, know, Chucky Adams, good. Eddie Davis. Ken Keith, so many guys are coaching now, and I love it. I love the fact that you guys are all staying in the game. But, Baron, Derek's got a question for you, but here's my next one. Let's say you're going into the Hall of Fame, and frankly, you probably should. Rookie of the year in 2001 in the CFL, six-time All-Star, as I said. A lion, a bomber, a rider. If you had to say what ball cap you're going to wear into the Hall of Fame, which one are you wearing? I, I don't I, – I wouldn't know. Uh <laughs> I enjoyed my time in BC. I enjoyed my time. Loved my time in Winnipeg. Both great cities. And then we all know Regina, man. That's nothing like uh, football in Canada and in, in, in the province of, uh, I mean, or in the city of Regina. So, you know, they do it different in Regina. So I I, I, I couldn't say uh, which one I would wear. But my, my favorite time, I would have to admit, was uh, when I played in um, Winnipeg. Uh, you know, I'm a BC Lion for life. I'm a Winnipeg Winnipeg Blue Bomber for life, and I'm a um, uh, I'm a, I'm I'm a part of Rider Nation for life. So I, you know, when you when you sweat bloods and tears, and you know, put all that effort in to play for your uh, respective team, you know, you're a part of that team for the rest of your career. So, you know, when the time comes for me to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and it, be, it do needs to come a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but That's I'll good. be honored, you know, uh, I'll be honored to make that, uh, uh, make that happen. I, you know, uh, BC was my first team. Winnipeg, I love the city of Winnipeg and how the fans, you know, um, just took to uh, me as a, you know, athlete and as, you know, a leader of an organization. I, I love it, you know, and, and same thing in Regina. So I, I can't really say which hat I'm going. I, I would just be going into the Hall of Fame. I would love that. You've been but, blessed. You know, now, I'm going to let, let everybody know. <laughs> you've got uh, you got my vote for sure. And you Now that you talk about it, you have been blessed, which you know with a tremendous career. Go ahead. Baron, what was the biggest – hurdle, obstacle, difficult thing to go from playing professional football for 10 years to now coaching uh, youngsters and, and youth? I think that, you know, and the one thing that all coaches who play the game uh, have to, they realize that real quick, is that you're not de dealing with professional athletes um, that you're used to seeing or even a college-style athlete. Uh, so you have to bring it all the way back down and um, go to ground zero and teach as if uh, they don't have any knowledge of the game. Uh, that's the thing that, you know, I think that was the biggest challenge for me was uh, when I first started teaching the game, I was teaching it as if they played on the level that I played on. I was like, oh, let's back this thing up. We got to take it down and, and break it down and, you know, and give it to them in bits and pieces as babies. And then they'll start to be able to, you know, give them the milk and then they'll start to be able to eat the meat. So uh, <laughs> I think that was the biggest <laughs> Biggest challenge for me coming back on the high school level. I was like, oh, okay, let's uh, let's let's go back a little bit because I'm so used to being on a professional level. That was a challenge, but you know, you make just like any other, like being an athlete, you make that adjustment and then you you go with the flow and then you give them what you got. You know, and you know, I'm a high energy guy. I'm a a wired up, you know, uh, uh, type of dude. I, I bring all the energy I can, and the kids love it, and I love being uh, energetic. You know, 2010 was your last season in pro football. It was your only season here in Saskatchewan, but you had a lot of gas in your tank that year, Baron. But you lost in a Grey Cup to uh, Montreal in Edmonton, 21-18. What are your recollections of that game? And if you could do anything different, what would you have? One, win the game. That would uh, be the number one thing that I would do different. But, uh, you know, I always put, you know, Rod, you know, uh, just like everybody else, I always went out there and played as hard as I possibly <clears throat> played and gave 100% to my teammates and to myself. I always had the mantra of um, I knew that I was going to be ready to play. I knew that I was going to play great. But a good leader leads others and help them raise their game. So I was basically, you know, I always tried to be um, a leader for my teammates and, and help raise their game. If I would change anything, to answer your question, was the score on the scoreboard? I went to three Grey Cup championships and lost them all by probably less than 
a total of 20 points. And, you know, those sting real bad, man. You, you work six months in the off season uh, to get to that point and uh, to try to be the last man standing and we came up short. But, you know, the thing that I did enjoy, you have to be in it to win it. And we, you know, had those opportunities to be in it. But not winning it was a sore loser part of me. I would cry every time. I, you know, I was that I was that dude that cried. I, hmm. I put that much into it. I cried like a baby when we lost. I know you were, but um, a Hall of Fame induction might make it sting a little less. So uh, we'll put in some calls after this. Not like you'd need it, but just to remind some people. And Baron producer Clark is telling me that you might have an announcement for us this morning. Well, lady, you you'll have to have me back on the show, right? Uh, there's gonna be. Some some news later um, that I'm excited about. Um, you know, you like to reap the benefits of of um, uh, your labor and the, the things that you work so hard to get. So you'll definitely have to um, have me back on, Rob. And you'll you'll break the news later uh, this year on, on what's happening, what's big. Um, I'm also doing some writing, and I'm gonna have a a book to come out some point in next year in 2020. But uh, I'll break the news here on the Rod Peterson show. You're just going to have to have me back on and we'll, we'll break that news. I can't wait. Well, Baron, you have an absolute open invite, which you know, I'm glad that your things are going so well. I knew you'd look great and I knew you'd be great, but you confirmed it today. So, uh, stay cool down there if you can and, uh, enjoy the rest of summer. Uh, I will. I will. Hey, hello to everybody in Rod Nation. Hey, definitely watching the games and watching those riders and as, as well as the Blue Bombers and them, them Lions. So I stay close to the game, watching the game. I don't get to come as much because I'm coaching, but I still love the CFL, baby. Thanks, Baron. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.